Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shelly, and this is my monthly roundup. If you've been following along for a while, you might've noticed that I did skip the month of June. At the beginning of this year, my goal was to make one monthly roundup video every single month as like a minimal goal. A couple of things that happened in June, um, I'm actually working on some other projects which took my time away and redirected it somewhere else. But also I didn't come across anything that I felt like I really wanted to share in a video. And I didn't wanna force myself to talk about random stuff because in these videos, I really like to include things that I have been liking because I do really try to be a little bit more thoughtful in these videos. I feel like things in June for me were pretty steady and I didn't really try anything new necessarily because of some other things I was working on. So that's why I figured I would just wait for July. So before I jump in, I just wanted to say that I didn't know that I was gonna re be replacing so much technology in my life. Most of the items that I'll be mentioning in this video are tech related, so I just wanted to give you a heads up. So there are five things that I wanted to share in this video and we're gonna get started with the Kindle. I actually picked this up during Amazon's Prime Day and personally, like in the past, I've noticed that that's one of the best times to pick up a Kindle. I believe there are sales at different times of the year on this particular device, but Prime Day is a great time to pick up a Kindle if it's something that you've been looking at. So just by coincidence, a couple of weeks before I decided to pick this up on Amazon during Prime Day, I noticed that the cover on my older Kindle was starting to crack and so that kind of started my search to just replace the cover. Cover. However, when I was trying to search for a cover, that's when I noticed that a new version of the Kindle just came out in September of 2021. This is my older Kindle that Chris is actually gonna start using. And as you can see, size-wise, they are very similar. However, where there is a difference is actually in the screen that you are looking at your book on. So I accidentally <laughs> opened up my book that I'm currently reading. As you can see, the reading area on the two different Kindle models is different. The newer one is a bit bigger, even though the device itself is pretty similar similar to the old version. I, I have had my old Kindle for seven years. I actually didn't realize it was so old. Um, Chris is gonna start using this because even though it is several years old, it does have that like backlit fun function. So if you're reading in a place where there's not a lot of light, you can still see all of the words on the page. My new Kindle seems to be more responsive when I'm navigating through the system, looking for a new book or turning the pages. I do feel like it pulls things up a little bit quicker than my old Kindle. This one also has a backlit screen so that you can see the words if you're reading in a place where there's not enough light. And you can also change the warmth of the screen, which I don't think my old version has. This might sound a little bit silly, but one of the features that I'm the most excited about is that the new version of the Kindle takes the USB-C charger, which allows me to cut down on the variety of different chargers that I need. So now my phone, my iPad, and my Kindle can all use the same charger, which is great to me. The second item that I wanted to mention, and like I said, I didn't realize I was gonna be replacing so much technology this year. So this is my new laptop. This is a MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Earlier this year, I decided that I wanted to replace my laptop because of my plans for creating more content in 2022. And I just felt that a new laptop was pretty necessary because my old MacBook was four to five years old and that one had a 15 inch screen. I did try to take my old MacBook out and about to like do work at a coffee shop and stuff like that. And I felt like the size was a little bit clunky. So I am very pleased with this smaller size. I feel like it's a lot more streamlined and and I also think that the keyboard on this is more to my preference than the keyboard on my old MacBook. I thought it was a little funny because I did post a poll on my Instagram asking if people thought I needed to get a new laptop or not. And most people actually said they didn't think I needed one. I think that if I was using my laptop for more like regular everyday use, like typing or spreadsheets and browsing on the web, I feel like my old one would have been just fine. But with the amount of editing videos and like how long these videos take to process before uploading, you can really really hear the laptop like working when it's doing all of those things. In the world of technology, four to five years is pretty old, I feel like, for a laptop. One of the things that frustrated me the most is that the memory on my old laptop would fill up so quickly. The old one that I had had 500 gigabytes on it of memory. So I decided to go with a terabyte for my new laptop because that was my biggest pain point. Next in technology is my iPad. I was actually looking at my notes on here. Um, so let me just get that off the screen. But like I mentioned, this is the year of technology for me. So I did decide to replace my old iPad. This is the fifth generation iPad Air. And previously I had an old iPad. I'm not even sure what model it is, but I also had it for about like four to five years. I had actually won it for free at an event that I had gone to. 
It was one of those things where you had to do something for participation and enter into a drawing and you had to be present to win. So they initially pulled someone else's name who had left and then they pulled my name. The reason why I wanted to get a new iPad is because one of the projects that I have been working on, um, I decided that I wanted to learn graphic design and I thought that you know having an iPad and an iPad pencil would be a little bit more convenient for me to do that. My older iPad was actually, I guess, so old it wasn't really compatible with the pencil. I think I would have had to purchase the older version of it. But even then, some of the programs that I was curious about using also wasn't super compatible or wouldn't be able to use like the most current version. So I decided to go with this. So in a whole package, what I purchased was the actual iPad itself, the pencil, and this case from the Apple store. When I got both of these devices, I did decide to do the trade-in program where I return like my old laptop and my old iPad for credit to get these new ones. And I just wanted to mention that because I felt like my experience with going through the trade-in process was actually really good. I'm not someone that wants to keep all of their old technology around and I would prefer to you know, find a better way to get rid of those things, like not throw it in the trash, but like put it through an e-recycling program, for example. So that's the reason why I decided to do that, but it was also really great that I got a credit on these new items that I purchased. Okay, let me go look at my notes to see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about with my iPad. So just really quickly, I wanted to share why I chose an iPad Air versus an iPad Pro. So most of my friends that I was kind of like surveying around, like what version do you have? I feel like most people I know do have an iPad Pro. However, they use their iPads as like a laptop, like their actual computer, but I have an actual computer right here. And so really what I use my iPad for is watching Netflix, YouTube videos, Amazon Prime videos, Hulu maybe, and also using Adobe Illustrator, the iPad app version. I know that you can do a lot more with tablet devices and you can work them just like laptops, but for me personally, knowing that I was really only gonna be using it for those things, I decided to stay a little bit on the less expensive, I mean, it's. This is not a cheap device in general, but I decided to stay on the less expensive side when it came to tablets. And of course I got the blue. Okay, so the last two things that I wanted to mention in this video are more like lifestyle items. So here I have these two vitamins from Ollie, and I feel like a lot of you out there have probably seen these before. Just to give you a quick background on my preference, I'm not someone who takes a lot of vitamins. Personally, I really do not like taking pills. Like I really struggle with that to be honest. However, I do take vitamin D regularly because that's just something that I need to do. I'm vitamin D deficient. Yes, even those of us who live in a very sunny place can be vitamin D deficient apparently. I picked up this probiotic plus prebiotic one because I was just getting really curious about probiotics in general. I went online and saw that there are lots of different options out there from other popular brands, but I did notice that those come in a pill form and they're a little bit more on the pricey side, so I was really trying to make it easy for myself here. I also just want to include that I'm not a medical professional or a nutritionist or anything like that, so if you have further questions about like what this all does, I do recommend talking with your doctor or a professional to get more information. So just to be really honest at like a super high level, the reason why I was interested in a probiotic plus prebiotic is I do just generally have like stomach issues, like not anything super crazy, but I was just curious what this was gonna do for me. This is around, I think it was about like $15, which I felt like wasn't a huge investment compared to some of the $50 options that I saw online. So I decided to pick it up and try it. I will say this flavor is peach. I feel like it tastes really good. And as far as what I wanted a probiotic to do for me, I feel like this is helping me out. The other one that I picked up is called Laser Focus. It says think fast and stay on task. Ginseng, alpha, GPC, and B vitamins. I'll be super honest. Um, I was just curious about what this meant and how I was gonna feel after I took it. I didn't really think it was gonna do anything to be honest with you. Sometimes I see these things and I'm just like, I don't know, let's just see how it goes. And so I decided to take one one day and it actually made me really productive. I took one this morning and just right there, I felt like I was talking really fast. I don't know if this is what's contributing to that or the tea that I had, but I normally have tea every single day. On the container right here, it says to take two, but I'm, I feel like I'm rather sensitive to things in general, for example, caffeine, so I only ate one. The really funny thing is the first time that I took this and I had one gummy, um, I was just like firing away and like getting all kinds of stuff done that day. I was really productive. <laughs> and I just think that's kind of funny, but you know, if this is doing something for me, maybe I'll take it on the days when I need more energy or something like that. I'm not relying on this to be like completely life-changing, but I did feel like it gave me a little bit of a boost. And so the last thing that I want 
wants to mention for this video is actually a productivity app. You can also get it on the web. It's Asana. I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with Asana or programs just like it. I have been using Asana for a couple of months at work and I felt like some of the things that I noticed about it would really help me with these other types of projects that I'm working on, like a place to store my YouTube video ideas and other content um, ideas as well, and helping me in that checklist kind of way. So I know that there are lots of programs out there that basically do similar things as Asana. I feel like people like that Kanban style where there's a different columns and you can move a tile along during a process. Asana Asana definitely has that look as well and I had gone online and researched like pulled up a bunch of different types of software that does this kind of thing so I looked at Monday, ClickUp, Trello and I do also use Notion which I've realized that I feel like the way that I use Notion is more like it's a notebook and that's just my personal preference and the way that I feel like I gravitate towards Notion so I really needed to find something else to pair with that and one thing that was really important for me was the like reminder aspect where I would get an email notification to remind me of things that I wanted to do this week. I wasn't able to find a setting in Notion that would send me those reminders. So if any of you out there are aware that I can do that, let me know because I would definitely love to implement that. But that's something that I noticed that Asana does for me when I'm at work. It sends me a daily email and reminds me of things that are coming up. The reason why I decided to go with Asana versus some of the other programs, one, I was looking for something that's free. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll switch over to something that's paid. But right now, I'm just trying to stay within a pretty tight budget. I also did see some like limitations with the other programs out there where you could only have like a certain number of projects or team members and things like that. And because my plan was to use a program just to like dump tons of ideas and potentially have a lot of stuff going on in there, Asana seemed like the most flexible free version that would allow me to do that. So far it's working pretty well for me, but let me know if you use any other programs that might be really helpful. All right. Well, that's all I have for my July monthly roundup. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. If you use any of these gadgets or vitamins that I've been trying lately, I would love to know your thoughts and hear if you have any other recommendations for me. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.